If I asked you to close your eyes and picture an electric car, I'd be willing to bet that you're picturing a Tesla. Of course you are. Tesla Motors is far and away the top seller of electric vehicles globally, and they have been for years. When it comes to mass-produced EVs, Tesla faces no real competition. So why are all the other car companies failing? I'm a freaking collectible. Check it out, these are the first official donut figurines. We've got James Kentucky Cobra Pumphrey over here and me, Nolan Be Kind Sykes. These limited edition figurines will be available September 25th starting at 9 a.m. And once again, they are limited. So once they're sold out, that's it. There's no more of them. But for three of you lucky D-holes, we're gonna be giving away three signed figurines. That's right, signed by James and I. So to enter, go to donutmedia.youtubes.com, follow the steps like visiting their YouTube's Reddit or their YouTube. The more steps you do, the more likely you are to win. So get on it. Okay, so we, the protective sleeve is off. Hear that? Oh, look at that. I love you. And there it is. There's James. And even on the shirt, you can see that it does have the donut logo, oh, on the front and back. Ah, so there's little, nice little touches here. I do like that James, James just looks so joyful. Let's open up mine. Be kind. Perfect. All right. Got glasses. Hey, that looks like me. They've even got my mole. How did I get to my, a point in my life where there's a, there's a collectible of me? In my car, no less. Guys, I'm really excited for this. When you get yours, please post some photos of them and tag me. Because uh, it's surreal that I have my own collectible figurine. So see you on September 25th, and good luck to those who enter. You know me, I'm a red-blooded gasoline boy through and through. But even I have to admit that the future is electric. We even made a video on whether or not electric cars are better for the environment than gas cars. The answer may shock you. It's actually one of my favorite videos we've ever done. And if there's one thing I've learned from all of automotive history, it's that competition breeds the best cars for consumers. Which brings me to electric vehicles. Of the approximately 65 and a half million cars sold around the world last year, EVs made up a mere 2.5% of the global market and just 1% in the US. But within the market, Tesla, specifically the Model 3, completely dominated. In the United States last year, Tesla's made up 78% of all EV sales. So far in 2020, they're outselling the next three biggest EV manufacturers combined. The Model 3 is the world's best-selling plug-in electric vehicle. And it's not even close. It doesn't just leave other companies in the dust. It's lapped them about 10 times over and has taken off like a rocket to Elon Musk's condo on Mars. The lack of competition is frankly frustrating. There have got to be plenty of companies that have the resources to provide an electric vehicle to the masses, right? There should already be a people's electric car comparable to a Tesla on the market. But there just isn't. And it's not for lack of trying. There have been several swings and misses made by the would-be Tesla killers in the past decade or so. For instance, despite Audi's popularity, their e-tron never really took off. Faraday Futures CEO went bankrupt and literally fled his debtors after the failure of the FF91. Even Dyson tried their hand at EV manufacturing before pulling the plug on the project because <laughs> it sucked. We talked about the Dyson car more in depth a few weeks ago. Go check out that episode if you haven't seen it yet. The car doesn't really suck, it was just really expensive. So what is everyone doing so wrong that Tesla is doing so right? Well, I've done some research and I've come up with three main areas where Tesla is kicking everyone else's EV butt. But the third one's got the most oomph. It is definitely the nail in their collective coffin leading directly to the answer of why they have stayed miles ahead of everyone else in the race. How do they consistently blow away their competition? First of all, in a nutshell, Tesla's electric vehicles are just plain better to drive than anything else on the EV market. Tesla hits it out of the park when it comes to the overall consumer experience. I'm talking about how damn good driving a Tesla really feels. Take the Model 3, Tesla's more accessibly priced family car and their stab at creating a mass market EV. 
This car is a dream to drive. It handles well, drives smooth, and is incredibly safe alongside all the standard EV perks like the quietness and instant torque. The design of the interior is a minimalist dream. The aesthetics are sleek and modern. The user interface is sophisticated yet kind of simple. It's a little more on the sophisticated side. I did not understand the Tesla hype until I drove one. Say what you will about the build quality and the gimmicky features like having to use a touchscreen to open the glove box, but after driving it, I truly do not care. Another huge factor is batteries, in that Tesla's batteries have longer range than all their competitors. In fact, Tesla's cars hold the top four positions on the list of EVs with the longest range. Not only are their batteries the best, but they're the only company to offer different battery packages at different price points. So although the base model of the high-selling Chevy Bolt has a comparable range to the base model 3, Tesla's higher specs smoke the Bolt. Plus, it's faster and more fun to drive. It's that variety that sets the Tesla apart from other electric vehicles. How the driver experiences the automated capability and features. But I'll get to the technology section of my love letter to Tesla a little later. I want to take a moment now to remind you that Tesla isn't perfect. They've seriously struggled with poor build quality and paint quality many times over. Remember back in 2018 when they were building cars in a literal tent to meet their quarterly production goal? That resulted in a harsh lack of quality control and a high number of defects in their cars. As a company, they've faced harsh criticism of the quality of their work. Over time though, they've been steadily addressing these concerns, solving problems, introducing newer and better models, something that BMW hasn't been doing with the i3, which is arguably the most recognizable rival of Tesla. This rivalry goes all the way back to 2013. BMW started developing the i3 as Tesla was producing their flagship Model S, but the truth is these two vehicles are nothing alike. The Model S is a luxury sedan. It's reminiscent of the Mercedes-Benz S-Class in its aesthetics and performance, but the i3 almost looks like a toy version of a futuristic car. Its design makes it read somewhat more like a novelty than a daily driver. And though its years on the market have given it something of a reputation, it's still BMW's only fully electric model. Since the i3 launched, Tesla has been hard at work with that signature innovation and relentless development to create newer, better models like the Model Y, Model X, and everyone's favorite, of course, the Model 3. The second point... <laughs> The second point I'll make as to why Teslas are so appealing to consumers has very little to do with the actual machines themselves. Teslas, much like yours truly, have an undeniable cool factor. They have that je ne sais quoi, an indisputable sense of joie de vivre, and when you see one, it coupe le souffle. That last one means to take your breath away. I had to do that like five times. <laughs> I'm very bad at French. If you'd like to hear more of me butchering pronunciations, check out our podcast, Pass Gas. Lots of names that I don't get right, and people send me helpful mail. What I'm getting at here is that Tesla has top-notch branding and marketing, and they have a zero-dollar advertising budget. They literally don't do ads. They don't have to. They're in the zeitgeist. And although they're a young company, Tesla is a household name. Not to mention the name itself, is catchy and apropos, something that other companies have tried to copy. I'm looking at you, Nikola. You can't just piggyback off Tesla and use the same guy's name. Look, I don't want to disparage your cars or anything like that, but that's, that's weird. Of course, a large part of its marketing success is due to the eccentric personality and celebrity of its CEO, Elon Musk. Elon basically doubles as the marketing department of the whole company. Everything he does is some kind of commercial for Tesla, whether he's sending a roadster to Mars, smoking a joint with Joe Rogan, or tweeting away to his 38 million Twitter followers. Elon stays in the headlines, and therefore, so does Tesla. And look, he's definitely not everyone's cup of billionaire tea. I have my issues with him. But the fact is, whether or not you're a Musk head or not, I'm willing to bet that most people in your life know who he is. Can you say the same for Mark Deusman or Jim Hackett? No. You know Elon Musk's name. You might not know his kid's name, but honestly, I don't think he does either. How is that fresh I Sorry? How is that fresh I <laughs> oh, oh, you mean my kid? Yeah. <laughs> But with this help, Tesla has an ardent and loyal fan base unlike that of any other car manufacturer. Furthermore, because of their success, all other EVs and their commercials kind of serve as free advertising for Tesla. When new EVs come out, analysts often label them as Tesla killers. That's free advertising. Some companies like Volvo openly challenge Tesla when they launch a new EV. Volvo claimed the Polestar 2 was their Tesla 3 competitor. It's free advertising. 
Then there's companies like Ford who spend hundreds of millions of dollars on advertising every year and base the whole marketing campaign of the Mach-E, an electric vehicle, on the Mustang, arguably one of the most iconic gas fueled cars ever. Why are they lumping these two ideas together? It pisses off some Mustang fanboys and is a complete missed opportunity to center Ford as a force in creating new, fresh, alternative energy vehicles. It's not that innovative. Tesla, though, sells innovation. They sell progress. They sell a vision of the future where technology is utilized to improve our lives and the planet. It's marketing, baby. Speaking of technology, it is the third component of my breakdown of Tesla's superiority over other electric vehicles. And it's the big one. Teslas are software-defined vehicles. What that means is that all the functions and features of a Tesla are primarily enabled and operated by software as opposed to hardware. This is what people are talking about when they say that a Tesla is basically a computer on wheels. They're right. Software-defined vehicles are different from the analog vehicles of yore because they offer an ever-changing and evolving platform to suit customers' needs. Tesla owners can reap the benefits of software updates, bug fixes, and feature upgrades without a single trip to the dealership. And I'm not talking about a new navigation system or stereo settings. These updates are like getting a whole new tune on your car. The most recent update, for instance, includes lower charge times, increased cruising speeds, updated driving visualization, which further inches them closer to full self-driving. It even adjusts your suspension to support aerodynamics and ride comfort. It's awesome. And while I love me an analog dash with a loud internal combustion engine, I can't deny that cars are headed for a digital future. Tesla is leading that charge, and boy, do they have a huge head start. Their tech is what makes them untouchable, even to good-looking competitors. Take Volkswagen, for example. When they announced their ID3, they called it their electric offensive, and it would dictate tens of billions of euros in the next eight years to launch up to 70 new EVs. The ID3, meant to compete with the fierce Model 3, looked like it might give Tesla a run for their money at first. It's an everyday EV with great maneuverability and with pretty good range. The rub was, predictably, the technology. After hitting the market, it soon became clear that the software in the ID3 was too hastily developed. In fact, the ID3, the company's first mass market EVs launch, was delayed due to the software issues. And the first versions of the car will be equipped with incomplete software architecture. VW just didn't have the people or the expertise to compete with Tesla's computers. Tesla has those things in spades. On top of being software defined, Tesla is the unrivaled leader in self-driving technology. They've been working on it longer and harder than any other company. There's no fully self-driving vehicle yet, but Tesla is getting close. It's got sentry mode, which continuously monitors the surroundings of the vehicle, adding protection and laying the framework for a self-driving future. Tesla's integrated central control unit, also known as full self-driving computer, AKA Hardware 3, quote, claims a computer performance of 144 trillion operations per second. Do you know how many a trillion is? It's a million millions. Now, imagine 144 of those. I can't wait to see the animation of this. <laughs> Now, I don't know too much about computers, but that sounds like a pretty damn smart one to me. This FSD computer has capabilities that competitors can only dream of. It's Tesla's ace in the hole and their biggest advantage over their competition. In Japan, Nikkei Business Publications did a teardown of a Tesla Model 3 to try and figure it out. What they discovered upon inspecting the FSD is that Tesla's technology is about half a decade ahead of the competition. So even for competing EVs like the beautiful Jaguar I-Pace, whose infotainment system might actually have a slight edge over its Tesla counterpart, the Model X, the self-driving tech is completely unrivaled. Tesla tech is king. Consumer experience, branding and marketing, technology, Tesla trumps all around. But now that we've looked at specifics, let's back up and think about the big picture. The giant question we're trying to answer with this video. Why does everyone else keep failing? This is not a simple answer, but as far as I can tell based on my research, legacy car manufacturers are failing to compete with Tesla for a couple of reasons. Firstly, many of them just plain underestimated Tesla when they were first starting out. Tesla's aspirations were lofty, and car companies like BMW and Mercedes-Benz didn't think Tesla could execute on their vision. This was especially true in the case of the Model 3. 
Tesla had a plan to deliver an affordable option to reach a wider market, and they did have problems and setbacks in the early stages of creating and manufacturing. But they figured their shit out eventually, and this year so far, they've shipped about 400,000 Model 3s. Nobody thought they could do it. Egg on all the haters' faces, and you know what? Egg is unpleasant. But hindsight is 2020, which is also this year. Did you know that? The big wigs of our beloved big car companies can't erase their past mistakes. But what is so frustrating about the situation is that they're also still reluctant to change. Every single big car manufacturer is dependent on the automotive industry's parts supply chain. Their business model depends on it. The parts supply chain is a layered system that includes dealerships, manufacturers, and three tiers of parts suppliers. Car buyers go to dealerships who place orders with manufacturers, who then use the dealer's data to design new models and collect components from the first tier of suppliers, who source parts from tier two suppliers. Tier three sells raw materials to everyone. It's complicated. This system has been ingrained in companies for decades. Of course, it's facilitated growth, but it also effectively kept big car companies from rolling with the technological punches. Tesla, on the other hand, doesn't rely on a parts supply chain and instead manufactures almost 100% of their vehicles in-house. There are no dealerships, no ordering parts from some other factory, and thus no middleman. Like we talked about earlier, Teslas are software defined. Tesla never made an ICE vehicle that would benefit from a parts supply chain. And the fact that the FSD computer replaces so many hardware components of an ICE vehicle is what makes the in-house manufacturing possible. The AI chips that are the beating heart of every Tesla machine are made, inserted, and sold by Tesla. It's a consumer's dream, a no-hassle one-stop shop for all your car pewter buying needs. If other car companies want to compete with Tesla, they have to compete with their business model. Tesla is essentially rendering supply chains obsolete, forcing car companies to follow suit and completely uproot their entire manufacturing and business models. That's a big ass. That's a big ass. <laughs> That's a big ask. If I was Mark Deusman, I'd be reluctant too, especially since Tesla only takes up 1% of the market in the US. And they haven't made a profit yet. I know I've been singing their highest praises so far, but Tesla isn't a perfect company. It has its problems too, okay? For one, since it was founded in 2003, Tesla Motors has never reported an annual profit. And for all its innovation, uncharted technological territory is a breeding ground for risk. So there is a chance for the car makers we know and love to stand up against the auto tech giant. It's just gonna take some risky moves and a couple profound changes. It's hard to imagine, but car companies kind of have to adopt an in-house manufacturing model for their EVs. It's the key to Tesla's success. And although it seems impossible, it's the only clear way out of inevitable obsolescence. Secondly, Tesla isn't the only company in the world making AI chips. Legacy car companies need to partner with AI platforms if they want to stand a chance against Tesla. Mercedes is already on this train and recently announced a partnership with NVIDIA to build their own software-defined vehicles in what could be the first real competition Tesla has ever faced. And you know what? I'm here for it. I'm always rooting for the underdogs like Mercedes-Benz and NVIDIA. You know, those little upstarts taking it to the man dude. And for how much I appreciate what Tesla makes, I also know that it is intrinsically different from what we know a car to be. It's complicated and the future is uncertain. What is certain though, is that the presence of EVs will only increase from here on out. And let's hope that there are plenty to choose from. If you'd like to see more videos from us, subscribe to Donut Media. We put out a video almost every day. Follow us on social media at Donut Media. We post behind the scenes pictures and to talk to you guys, follow me at Nolan J. Sykes. I fancy myself a uh, an amateur photographer. Be kind, I'll see you next time.